For today's cool down, we're going to talk a little bit about how to attach different types of pendants with your own custom bale. But first, let's talk about necklace cords. Take a look at these different types of leather that I have. So starting with this one, we have some two different sizes of suede. And this is a stitched cord. And you can see here on the end, it has a cotton core inside. So suede, everybody's familiar with how soft and supple suede is going to be. And this is going to give your designs a really natural kind of organic feel. And it comes in all different kinds of colors. And you can adjust it so that that stitch portion is to the back of your design. So you don't even see that when you're wearing it. But it is really nice and comfortable. I also like this type of suede, which is printed. And see how it has this little petal, petal patterned pebbles on the suede cord? It really catches the light. So when you move it around, you can see that it kind of has a nice sparkle and sheen to it that is different. You know, when you're thinking about suede, a lot of times you're thinking about a more natural look. And I really like how this gives it kind of a little bit of an animal print feel, but it combines beautifully with different types of beads and pendants. And of course, that comes in lots of different colors, too. Now, this is a Napa type of leather. So this is actually the softest type of leather that you can use with your necklace cords. And again, it's a stitched version so that it has that thicker feel to it. And it gives your necklaces a really substantial feel. But it's really nice and light when you're wearing it. And these are a couple of metallic colors that I chose. But it comes in a lot of different colors as well. And all of these are dyed using the most, most natural process possible. So there is no lead or cadmium in the dyes. So you, that's something you want to be aware of, especially when you're making your jewelry for resale. Pay attention to the types of materials you're using, because people will have a lot of questions about that. You want to make sure that you're using something that's sustainable, ecologically friendly, but also that feels good to wear and is safe to wear. So let's take a look at a few of these different types of pendants, too. They all have different bales, and that's why I chose these examples to show to you. This one has a loop here at the top. This one has a really big bale that's going to fit really nicely over our pendant cords. But sometimes you find a pendant that you really fall in love with, but it has a really tiny um, bale. That This would be perfect for chain or some other type of smaller, like if you wanted to string this in between beads. But I wanted to use it with these colorful necklace cords. And I'll show you how to make one that's removable, too, so that you can interchange it with different necklace cords. OK, so I'm just going to get this guy ready and by clipping off the bale. And so this is a piece that's been soldered together here. So I'm just going to use some heavier duty cutters to cut through that and then pull it off of my neck piece. Then what you can do is take a piece of wire that's you know probably about six inches is a good place to start. And because pendants are directional, I like to make my wrapped loop so that it's going to look good on the front. So I make a 90 degree angle and then use my round nose pliers. And I'm going to use my tweezer nose pliers to just open my loop a little bit and slip my pendant on. And so see how my coiling is going to come from the back to the front. So I'm just going to hold my loop closed with my pliers and wrap my wire around. Now I'm using 20 gauge wire, but you could use 20, 22 is a good choice too. And then just coil it around. And I always like to finish the wrap in the back and then trim it really close. And then I'll just add a couple of beads here. And I have some different colors that are going to go with my pendant. So I'm just going to stack those onto my wire. And then you have some choices when you're ready to make your next loop. So because I want this to be an interchangeable piece, I'm going to go ahead and attach this to a large lobster claw. And that way I'll be able to remove it from my cord and put it onto a different cord if I want to. So now I'm just going to make a loop here. And then the same process again. I'm working from the back to the front. Only this time I need my loop to be sideways. So I'm going to grab my tweezer nose and just give it a twist. And open it up again and attach it to my hook. Now, I always get a little bit confused about which direction my hook is going. See, now there it's going to be facing the front. And I actually want it to go the other way. So I'm just going to turn it around. There we go. Now it will be facing the back. And then close it. And it's the same thing here, just wrapping it closed. And then you can make a decorative wrap, too. So you can go all the way around and just bring it all the way down and then fasten that at the bottom. And that's just kind of a little bit of extra flare there on your wrapping. And I want it to finish in the back, so I'm just going to trim it down. And then 
I can see that it needs to be pressed in a little bit, so I'll just come back with my tweezer nose and press it in a tiny bit. Okay, so there you can see my finished piece there. So let's look at some other options. For example, if I brought in some different colors of beads, I drew out the red and the blue here, but look how different it would look if I used some orange and turquoise and really pull out the different colors that are in your pendant, and that will give it a really different look. You could make several of these, and they would go with lots of different outfits. Now, you could also attach this to a piece of chain, like I could put hook that onto a little necklace chain here that has some charms on it, or I could add this to a piece of leather. What I would say is take a piece that um, is something that you're gonna make a basic necklace cord out of. So I'm going to use this round bolo braid and I'm just going to cut a piece that's about 16 inches because I want this one to be a choker length. I'm gonna use my um, cutter that's good for cutting through thick cords, so heavy duty scissor. And then I'm just gonna add some glue to the end here and then you put the glue into the cup rather than putting it on the end of the cord just so that it keeps your glue nice and neat inside. And you can kind of squeeze these ends together a little bit so that you can get them fastened into your cord. And if you wanted to, even before you go to glue the ends on, you can add a little bit of glue to the end of your cord and that holds it together for you too while you're gluing. So we'll just go ahead and add our other end and then we're almost all set for that. And then we can clip our pendant onto the center and we'll have a really quick and easy necklace. So we'll let that dry and then clip this guy on. So you can tell what it's gonna look like when it's done. Here we go. And then let's just add one more bail. And this time, instead of adding a clasp, I'll just show you how to make a really big loop. So what we'll do is take our pendant, and this one has a loop here of wire at the top. I'm just gonna cut, again, about a six inch piece. I'm gonna go ahead and get my bead ready. And this time I'm gonna draw out a turquoise type of color so that it goes along with my tree. And so first of all, I'm gonna use the very tips of my pliers to make a really tiny loop. And this is the one that's going to connect to the top of the pendant. I'll just slide that into place. And then I'm gonna close this up with a simple wrap and close that. And then I'll use my cutter here. Then we come in with another bead. And this time, instead of making a small loop, we're gonna make a big one so that it can fit over a larger piece of leather. And to vary the sizes of your loops, of course, you just use the tips of your tool. So this time we'll use the very base of the loop and we'll just make a bigger loop like that. Now, if you wanted this loop to be really big, you could wrap this around a Sharpie or something bigger, a wooden dowel, a paintbrush handle, anything you have laying around can make a big, nice big loop. And if you need to adjust it at this point, you can pull it even back a little bit just so that it's a little bit bigger and it's gonna be a little bit flatter on top, but that's okay. I can go back and shape that up if I want to. And now this time, instead of just finishing here at the top, again, I'm gonna do a decorative wrap to kind of mimic the look of this twist here at the base of the tree. I'm gonna just coil my spare wire here around the bead. That's just gonna give it a little bit more of a decorative effect. And I cut my wire a tiny bit short, so I have to be careful here. And the best way to do that is just pull it around with your pliers where you can get in where it's really tight and pull it all the way around and then flatten it down and you've got your own handmade bale. Now I know that it's ready to slip onto my cord so I could put it onto my pattern cord or I could use my thinner cord. Either one is gonna be a beautiful finish for your design. So along with these other couple of examples that I brought, these are a bunch of different ideas that you can use to make your own custom pendants.